everyone, and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is a blue collar wine show where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. Super stoked about the next few episodes they're going to do. I'm, I'm really want people to expand their palate horizons. We uh, last episode we talked about some really unusual whites for us in the U.S. Now I'm not saying they're unusual for the people where they grow. Obviously, they know these wines, but many times and. You know, when, when only four wines make up 75% of the sales in the U.S., you want people to try new things. So, we have three wines here with uh, grapes that maybe you have not heard of, but we're going to give them a whirl. Uh, the first one I'm super stoked about is a uh, Pais. Pae, it's uh, one of the main grown, uh, also known as the Mission Grape, brought over from Spain by missionaries to Mexico. Now it's down, and, and of course they use it as a sacramental wine in the church. Um, then it made it its way down to Chile, and there it uh, rivals Cabernet Sauvignon and planting. So it's a big thing in Chile, Pais. They also uh, use it, uh, grow it in Peru, and they make, they, uh, make Pisco with Pais. So, just a little rundown on that grape. Um, you know... Low acidity, higher sugars, uh, really light in color, n not a lot of concentration because it comes in, it grows really like probably I would compare it to uh, Carignan, you know, big production cluster. So not a lot of concentration in the wine, but it's become quite a thing with the natural wine movement and uh, in bars, uh, wine bars in Santiago, a lot of uh, people have become interested in Pais. This is only the second one I've ever, I've ever tried. I have one under my house. I was going to go grab it, but we'll go with this one. Uh, grown in Itata, uh, Chile, 2021, Pedro Para Sol Pit Pais. And Pedro Para, by the way, evidently is just a total terroir geek. He has a PhD in terroir, which I did not know you could get a PhD in terroir. So he's big into the dirt and examining a lot of wineries. Uh, uses expertise in terroir, and uh, there you go. So this is Soul Pit, Pais, and it says terroir alert, sandy, silty, black basalt, very dry, very old dry farm, Pais from Itata. <clears throat> this rolls in at $40, so not cheap, 40 bucks. So used to be uh, mostly used for bulk wines, but now they're, you know, they're starting to get serious about it, as this dude is, uh, Pedro Para. Very, very, I guess he's very well known. Look at the color on that. Boy, very light, very light. My first thought when I see color like that, salmon wine, uh, you know, salad, red, maybe chill it down. Look at the color. I mean, it's just a kind of a, a reddish light. Light, light, you can see right through it. I'm sure you can see that there. Let's see what we get on the nose. Ooh, very interesting nose. Wow. There's definitely uh, flowers, very floral on the nose, very floral. I get some raspberry notes, some cherry notes. Almost like a licorice component coming through, which is really peculiar. And uh, very floral. Like I said, a lot of flowers on this one. Yeah, there's that, like, like panda bear licorice. You know, not really strong, but there's definitely a raspberry cherry thing. Yeah, interesting nose. Let's see what we get on the palate. Yeah, that's it. Almost like a granola bar thing going on as well, and with the flowers and a little bit of licorice in there, and definitely a raspberry component. Okay, let's see what we get on the palate. A little bit of grippy on this one, on the back side. Very interesting flavor profile on this wine. I like it. That licorice notes come through on this. The red flower notes are there. That kind of oatmeal thing, like not oatmeal, like granola bar thing, is, kind of hangs in there as well with the raspberry and the cherry notes.
little bit of kind of a funkiness in there as well. Kind of grips on the finish. Very, very interesting wine. I like it. 40 bucks is a bit steep. But, you know, this guy obviously puts a lot into making the wine. I mean, this is quality Pais. I, th I think this is better than the first one I ever tried, which was a few years ago. I haven't had much since then. You could put, you could chill this down a bit. It'd be a great uh, summer wine. I would have this with charcuterie, you know, a little meat, because it, it has that kind of grippiness on the backside. I, I definitely pair it with salmon. You could have this with uh, shellfish easily. Um, I think it does need some food. But that interesting kind of granola bar thing, you know, just a plain one, maybe with a little licorice in there, because that licorice comes through on the backside, on the finish. That funkiness too on the back, right at the beginning, at the end. I like this wine. It's forty dollars. I know that's a lot of money, but I think a lot of you would like this wine. Very interesting wine. It's it's a thinking wine. So when you're drinking it, you got to really put some thought into it. You just don't slug it down. Yeah, very, very good. The red flower notes really hang on the backside. So I'm going to go straight up B on this one. I think it's a very good wine. Forty duck, I know $40 is a lot. Uh, but fortunately, you can probably go out in a wine shop somewhere and ask the guy that you trust in the wine world, say, hey, do you have a Pais I could try? I think the one under my house was under $20, but I don't know yet. I might review that a little bit later when I find it. I moved, it's been a few months, but I don't totally have my wine collection. I don't collect wine. My wine that I have, totally organized, but I think I did run across the Pais. Yeah, really interesting wine. If you want to try something really cool, uh, Kind of hipster, I would call this a hipster wine. You know, give it a try, Pais. $40, like I said, it's not cheap, but it's okay. Now let's move on. This is a 2023 Labanzi, Sinso. Uh, Sinso. C I N S A U L T. And this rolls in at $15. And this is from Swartland, South Africa. Swartland is near Cape Town, kind of up north, northwest of Cape Town. Swartland. I love Cape Town. Cool place. Except for the shanty towns. It was rough seeing those. So, Cinceau. Cinceau is used mostly in southern France, uh, blended in the Cote de Rhone's uh, Chateauneuf de Pops. They use Cinso quite a bit there. But it's also grown throughout the world. I think some of the oldest Cinso grapes are in Lodi, California. Uh, you say, well, how could that possibly be? Well, because of uh, phylloxera, you know, they had to get the ones that were planted in the 1800s from here and graft them into, uh, you know, put them, replant in France. So Cinso, it, um, one of the best Cinsos I've ever tasted was from uh, Dusted Valley in Washington State, here in my state. I, I wanted some. I wanted, they didn't have any left. Why did you taste me on it? If you have no, none left, no. Best Cinso I've ever, I've had to date. I'm sure there's a great one out. So Washington does a limited amount of Cinso. They don't have a lot planted. They do it in California, Australia, and but mostly known in France. And they... I think Cinso, they do it in Provence. I think Cinso makes some of the best rosé ever. I love rosés that have a lot of Cinso in them. So, darker in color, you can see that. Let's see what we get on the nose. Well, this has black raspberry, dark cherry all over the nose. Yeah, I would say black raspberry, dark cherry. Fairly perfumed, that's for sure. And maybe just a hint of licorice. Let's see what we get on the palate. Those cherry notes, the raspberry notes, they come through big time. 
a little bit of a uh, underneath you get sort of a, a richness that um, a little acidity is good too but uh, like hints of licorice not strong licorice notes good acidity mouth watering juicy on palate I like that yeah big time raspberry cherry notes front to finish good expansion on the mid palate finishes fresh and clean good balance good integration and then right at the back end you just get just a little kiss of licorice on there yes okay so these guys are big into earth they have little neckers that say one percent goes to the earth and they're big into that they're, they're big into keeping the environment you know healthy uh, and I, I believe they're biodynamic yes biodynamic I don't believe they're organic but biodynamic for sure they use uh, sustainable uh, practices in their vineyards and in their winery cool one percent for the planet there you go good cause good wine and it's 15 bucks um, let's see another quick whirl yeah there's a kind of a nice peak on the mid palate really this is a tan in the delicious category 15 bucks yeah, I'm liking it. I'm digging it. Let's move on. Now, this is where people get kind of, you know, a little bit nervous. And this is wines from Portugal. This is the 2020 Vida, means life, uh, Duro red wine. The Duro, everybody knows where, I'm sure you know where the Duro is. Um, this is a blend of Tariga Nacional. Tariga Franca, and Tinta Ruiz. So people see those things and they go, what in the heck is that? What is... So Tariga Nacional and Tariga Franca, often used in the production of port. Uh, Tinta Ruiz is a synonym for Tempranillo. And I know a lot of you know what Tempranillo is. So yes, Tinta Ruiz and Aragonés are two names for Tempranillo in Portugal. So when you say Tinto Ruiz, you say, I know that one, that's Tempranillo. So this is a blend of those grapes. And Portugal is just amazing values. So this, I said, at 2020, rolls in at $14. I think some of the best values you can get in red wine are from Portugal. It's amazing what they can produce for such a small amount of money. This loft is funny, it's, you know, it can settle. You're like, what was that? It's just settling. It's just settling. Okay, now this is really dark in color. The darkest one of the bunch. I hope you can see this. I should get a piece of white paper. I'll do that. I will do that. I need a little white paper that I can put behind it so you can see how dark it is. It's a really purple, black, dark. You get on the nose. Boy, it's a brooding nose. You, you just know it's, it's like deep. I'm getting a blackberry, boysenberry, plum. I'm going to go that direction. Blackberry, boysenberry, plum, black plum. I'm going to hedge towards boysenberry because, you know, they're a big, fatter, juicier version. And there's some underlying, like... Uh, dark flower notes as well. Let's see what we get on the palette. See, that's the thing. This has good structure. Good acidity. A little grip on the backside. Still smooth. The, the blackberry, boysenberry notes come through on the palette. That black plum. Good expansion on the mid palette. Long finish. The tannins kind of are a little on the sweeter side, but not. it's not a sweet wine, don't get me wrong, it's a dry wine. But the tannins feel sweet on the back end. I'm even, just a slight hit of blueberry came through it as well, which I did not get on the nose. That's much. 
but now I get it. See, some, I taste it, now I can smell it. Nice and juicy, a little crunchy on the backside. Delicious wine. I'd go 10 in the delicious category on both of these wines. This, $14, is amazing value. It's complex, has good structure, nice integration. I mean, all the parts work together nicely. That's what integration means. They all work well. There's no awkwardness in the wine. Long finish. The, the uh, boysenberry and cherry notes, and they're not cherry, uh, plum notes just really linger on the backside. This is, st I'm still tasting this wine. It's $14. Portuguese wines. Don't be afraid, even if you can't say it. What is Tariga Nacional? What is Tariga Franca? You know what Tinta Ruiz is now. You can be the smart one in your wine group. Tempranillo. Aragona is Tempranillo in Portugal. So, there you have it. We have a Pais, a Senso, and then a Portuguese red brown with all these kind of interesting grape varietals. They, do, they love to blend up in, um, nor up in the Duro. They love to. You, you, very hard to find a single varietal wine up there. But don't be afraid of the grapes. They're really cool. They're really good. They make great wines. Super stoked about that wine. Now, just a quick shout out to a couple of new subscribers. I'd like to make a shout out to Mr. Wright W, Adrian Rivera, Emilio Itorino, and Morgan242242. Thank you for subscribing. I really appreciate it. Oh, and Isaac Long. There he is. So, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying the content on these things. I hope you're learning something. Uh, that's what I'm here for. I want you to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. The other little disclaimer is for all my homies. Little disclaimer, not everything I review on this episode I carry in my department. But I guarantee you, I already have this one in the department. This one is coming my way. Great, great values. Thank you for taking a little time out of your day. If you haven't yet, please think about subscribing so you can see what's coming up. I'm going to be going over some very, what I call, obscure grapes from the U.S. standpoint. You know, wines, wine, maybe grapes we're not familiar with, but I'm going to try to help you get familiar with them and get you to try some new stuff because it's so cool. The wine world is such a cool place, and there's so many different kinds of wines to try, not just Cab, Chard, Pinot Gris, and Pinot Noir. Love all those wines, but there's so many cool things out there, and I want you to try it. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.